Hello, this is Insane Monster, and we're back with part with the next part of What If Asta was the Apostle of Kratos, or What If Asta was Kratos' apostle, whichever you preferred to refer it to as. So this is part two, and we when we left off, Asta defeated the uh, Asta defeated the chain mage as well as at that night had a bit of a dream where Kratos told him the basics of what he can do now. So we head to where Asta spent six months training. When he started, he tried out his new weapons. Figuring that the shield could only absorb magic that it comes into contact with, it would and not having a partner to train with wasn't a lot to make stuff to train with that. As for the Demon Slayer sword, uh, the usual training like he did in canon. And the Chaos Blades took some time to get used to. Swinging the blades around with those chains he found a bit difficult, but quickly picked up on it and was able to hit precise targets fairly easily. And as for the Spartan Rage that he used, uh, whenever he uses it, his marks on his body that he gained as well start to, as well as his eyes start to glow. So he quickly found out while he was training that the longer he stays in that kind of state, the more pale white his skin gets and the more red his eyes get as well. But once he's done using it, he tried a couple of different times seeing what would happen if he stayed in that state longer and longer and found out that the longer he's in that kind of state, the longer it's going to take for him to go back to normal from being pale white and with red eyes. So there's that. As so we head back to where they head over to the Magic Knights exam. Asta has a lot more strength and power in this one. And with Yuno using his magic to help him get around and keep up, they're able to get there about two days early. So they decide to camp out and explore the capital while they're there waiting for the exams to start. One day, Asta saw some guys harassing a girl who had a infant on her back and children around her. She had red hair. Asta instantly got mad from seeing this. When one of the mans put his hand on her shoulder, he grabbed his forearm and started squeezing pretty hard. The man went down to his knees, yelling, yelling Ah, what the hell are you doing? Asta just stares on the map, saying, I should be asking you that. This guy's friend started to attack Asta, but Asta pretty much stomped him. At, though in defending himself from the guy who he had his arm in a vice grip, from his defending himself from that guy's friends, he did end up breaking one of the bones in his forearm causing them to panic and start running away. Asta standed his hand to the girl and asked if she was okay. She took it and, and Asta helped her up. She said, yes, thank you. Asta introduced himself as Asta from Haas Village, and she introduced herself as Rebecca, and that these were her siblings. When she asked what was he doing in town, he just responded with that he was there for the Magic Knight exam. 
you were so you said, well, you're about a day early. He just rubbed the back of his head and smirked, saying, yeah, I know. So, so they got along, and he helped her out with the grocery shopping that the, she decided to do that day, since he had some free time. Once every, that was done, they went their separate ways, say, saying that they should meet again. And the next day, the Magic Knight exam began. They, everybody was shocked as usual from you know having a four-leaf clover grimoire. Though when Asta came up, he decided to try to hide it a little bit. And the guy at the desk just looked at it thinking, huh? The hell? Is this some kind of joke? Asa said, uh, no. He opened up the grimoire and let it float. Like grimoires that only grimoires can do. The man was taken aback. He's never seen or heard of a six-leaf clover grimoire. So he told Asta to go somewhere and wait for a minute. He'll be with him. Where he went was to fill in the captain's. They were, they never heard of a grimoire having six leaves. Some of them were just not, in, weren't really that interested, mostly because he was a commoner, but still intrigued about his grimoire. So, and they decided on a few of them to go see what this kid is about. The three, four of them went. It was Captain Vengeance, Captain Nozel, Captain Flagolion, and Captain Yami. Though so news got to the Wizard King pretty quick. And he ended up barging in there before the captains got to Asta. Julius said hello to Asta and asked to see his grimoire. He showed him, which he just nerded out instantly like he does and he asks what kind of magic do you use uh i use anti-magic but who are you the wizard king uh coughs and says oh my name is julius nova Kronos. i am the current wizard king oh the jaw just drops and he's excited and he, then Julius just said, well, well, yes, yes, but what type of magic do you use? Asta paused for a moment and said, well, I used anti-magic. Anti-magic? Yes, yes, sir. Hmm. Julius o created a chrono spear and gave Asta his grimoire and told him to demonstrate it. He pulled out his Demon Slayer sword and destroyed the spear completely with a single slice. Julius was impressed. Then the, then the captains came in and were shocked to see him. They asked what he was doing here. Julius just said he heard, he heard real quick about the six-leaf clover grimoire and wanted to see it for himself. Turns out, this kid uses anti-magic. They look at him and one with Yami stating, Hey kid, aren't you a bit young to be having tattoos? Asa says, well, no, it's not a tattoo. Uh, this is a mark that just showed up on my body when I first grabbed hold of my grimoire at the, at the grimoire ceremony. They look Adam is it said with Julia saying, Wait, I thought you said that you have I don't understand. I thought you said that you have anti magic. What kind of power can just develop a mark on your body like that? Also the uh kind of swallows and explains, Well, uh there was I don't know what exactly, but 
that something came into my dream and I knew it wasn't a dream because it was way too real. It, it, it was a man that had similar markings to me. Uh, and he said that he gave me his blessings. I don't know what all that's about, but uh, it's just what I know. Of course, he's somewhat lying. He can't really say that he's a freaking apostle to a war god. Because then he'll be seen as somewhat crazy. And also he doesn't want to deal with all that mess. Hmm. Julia says blessing. Hmm. Interesting. Is that what this sixth leaf represents? Nozelle said. Asa just kind of uh, nervously smiled and said, well, yeah, basically. Do you know what he was? Asa just shook his head saying, no, no, not really. So he told me what all three of the weapons in my grimoire can do. He looked at the sword in Asta's hand and thought, hmm, I've heard sometimes grimoires can hold physical objects if they are magical based. So Anti-magic? Hmm. Then Julius just got bright-eyed again, saying, Wait, what kind of other weapons do you have? Asta replied with, Well, this is the Demon Slayer sword. Which, they kind of are taken aback by the name of it. As he puts it back in his grimoire. Then he took out his seal. He told them that it's a collapsible seal that absorbs magic and turns it into anti-magic. And I can hit the back of the seal to release it as a black mist where magic won't work at all. Putting that back, he then takes out the chaos blades. He tells them that they're mid-range weapons which they're confused because they're short blades. Then he shows them how he can use them with precision with using the chains. He tells them that like the Demon Slayer blade, the Demon Slayer sword, the blade can cut through and destroy magic. Though the chains on these once they are wrapped around somebody, can seal somebody's magic inside of them. And the flat of the Demon Slayer blade can actually reflect magic. Then Yami asks the obvious question, Wait, if you use anti-magic, doesn't that mean you don't have any magic at all? So you can't use any? Asa just kind of uh, chuckles a bit and said, Yeah, basically, I can't use magic at all. I can't fly, I can't use creation magic, and I can't uh, shoot out magic. So, I get, though these markings do have an additional ability that they gave me. They, Longin stepped in and said, what ability was that? He closed his eyes and the marks began to glow as he sold off some incredible strength by stomping on the ground, completely shattering it. The captains were wondering, how are we supposed to just judge somebody for a magic knight exam when he has no magic? It's not that he's weak, it's that he uh, doesn't have magic, but he has the ability to destroy it. That's what Julius chimes in saying. He continues with, due to the fact that this boy can destroy magic instead of use it, it allows him to change the field of battle immensely. So, hmm, if we think about it, perhaps we should grade his capabilities on a different scaling system. The captain's think this over a little bit, and they go on along with Yami said, yeah, that's fine. Shouldn't be a problem. Though, 
Captain Nozell wasn't really too sure about it. And Captain Vengeance just didn't care. Though he was interested in what kind of entity gave a magicless boy a blessing. So we get to the magic night exam when Asta's walking over to the test site. Julius said that he'll probably mostly be graded on his ability in the combat portion, which Asta thanks him and they leave. As per usual, the flying, uh, magic, aiming, as well as the creation portion of the Magic Nugget exam did not go well for him. But we get to the combat section. This time, we have, well, Seke saw him, but he felt a little uneasy, like he was projecting some kind of, like Asta was projecting something that just made him a little bit afraid, like something was off about him. So he didn't end up fighting him. Instead, someone else from the Magic Knight was asked by Julius to fight him. When he was told that this kid was magicless, he was he was frustrated that the that the Wizard King would do something like that. But considering it came from the Wizard King, he didn't really have a choice. So we come in with L Leopold Vermillion. Everybody was confused about why this kid was taking on a magic knight. Uh, sorry if I have this a little messed up age-wise or, or something like that. But uh, you... It's hard to remember all the names and ages of everybody in Black Clover, considering there's so many characters. So I do apologize if I got the aging wrong, but here we go. So, Liam Pold just starts the battle blasting fire, and Asta uses the Chaos Blades to destroy it. Even... Leopold then began to fire multiple smaller shots, thinking that he might have a better chance of hitting him that way instead of just with a large shot. Though, that's when Asta pulled out the shield and began absorbing his magic, converting it into anti-magic. Next, Asta hur hurried up and punched the back of the shield releasing all the anti-magic that was built up. Then when Vingolion, I mean, ugh, sorry. Then when Leopold tried to use his magic, nothing happened. Which is when Asta rushed in, powered up with the Spartan's wrath, rage or wrath, whichever, and gut punched them hard enough to send them flying to the wall knocking him out everybody was amazed by this and now they but now they had to deal with the black cloud of anti-magic though to their surprise it didn't last that long right when asta put the shield back into the grimoire the black mist just disappeared Legolan was impressed about how well he fought against Leopold, a royal who's supposed to have an incredible amount of magic. So things go on, and and we see, you know, still gets into the Golden Dawn, and Asta ends up with three hands this time. The Golden Dawn, of the Crimson Lion Kings and the Black Bulls. He takes a look at his choices, and when he gets to Yami, he sees that he's pretty huge. And thinks, well, maybe I can learn more about swordsmanship and being a warrior from him. He does have a sword 
at his side. And he seems like the only captain or Magic Knight that has one of those. So it might be useful to learn something from him. Plus, he seems like a warrior, which is what Kratos picked me for. So it might be best to go with him. So Asta chose the Black Bulls, which surprised everybody. So we keep so we go on to where Asta is about to leave. But then Leopold burst in saying, Wait You how did you do that? Asta replied with Um I use hand time magic. I basically don't use magic, I destroy it. Which just shocks Leopold with him smirking. Saying, now that's something. Tell me, who are you? Asta replies with, My name's Asta, I'm from Hodge Village, and I'm planning on becoming the future Wizard King. Which, Leopold just smirks, saying, Well, it looks like you're my rival, because that's what I'm aiming for, too. Asta smiled, saying, <laughs> Sure. And went through the portal to meet the Black Bulls. So we keep to where Asta meets the Black Bulls. And has to do the magic, the baptism with Magni. So this time, uh, Yami acts his luck to give him a hand in it. But it's luck's okay with, but... He's wondering why it's two versus one. Yami just says, just do it. Then we, then for the, well, Asta does end up dodging the rapid attacks from Magna and Luck pretty easily, ending up having to charge up Spartan's Wrath a bit, which they saw the markings on his body glow along with his eyes. So Yami started to notice something that he didn't see because of the black mess around him in the exam. His skin's getting lighter, almost white. But once that was done, both, sorry, both Magna and Luck charged up a giant attack and told Asta to prepare himself. Asta quickly pulled out his anti-magic shield and his demon slayer sword out. As they fired, Magna's fireball went into the anti-magic shield, while Asta used the flat of the blade to reflect Luck's lightning bolt back at him, while rushing at Magna, slamming his body with the shield. ultimately getting him to pass the baptism, which causes Magna to get excited about him, and Luck freaking goes nuts having a strong person to fight against now. Though Asta declined Luck's challenge, and Asta ended up getting his grimoire. But from the upper part of the... Black Bull's hideout, we see a silvered haired girl looking down at what's going on. And that will be where we will end this part of the what if. Sorry if I had a little trouble talking. Um, not uh, having a little something going on with me. Not sure what, but basically, uh, thank you. Please enjoy. Hope you like this and. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and finally, a bit of announcement. Uh, as per the schedule, I am going to stick to the 12 what-ifs that will be the main what-ifs of my channel. However, when I catch up in one of these or more of these what-ifs, 
I am thinking about once per Saturday, I will upload a video, a new what if, and that new what if will be only one part until one of the other what ifs I have ske I have going already that are part of the main line up end. Then I take a look about on which what if that is part of the Saturday let's call it a Saturday night special kind of thing and see how that goes. The one the videos that will be just one the beginning part of these what ifs will then become the new main line up and it will be determined on which one has the most likes on it. Now there will be a poll left in the video near the end here where you can vote yes or no for this idea. If you pick yes, then once every Saturday a new what if, which will only be the beginning part of it, will be placed on my channel. As for and will not get another part until it will be until it gets to be one of the new main lineup for my what if channel. Like I said, if you are okay with that, then please click yes on the poll. And if you don't, click no. And uh, like I said, whenever one of these do one of the what ifs on the main lineup does end. We, I'll pick the one that has the most likes on it to take its place. And it's just that simple. And it will continue like that. But only if you, the subscribers and viewers, agree to it. So, like I said, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed, and see you later.